So oftentimes it feels like we're all trying to manage all these different kinds of media while making our brands bigger and more known than ever and then kind of like the back of a shampoo bottle you have to mix and repeat and figure out what's working. And so I wanted to start off the discussion today in terms of optimizing an online channel strategy with some of the, the latest statistics on how much time we're all spending with our different digital files, um, with our different devices and it, it's kind of mind-blowing actually. If you think about um, the way that your team spends their time collaborating and working together to get multi-channel campaigns out the door, it's amazing to think about that they spend up to 10% of their time just simply finding and sharing assets. That's not creating them, it's not editing them, approving them, publishing them. That's literally just moving files around. And I think there were some bad jokes about accountants at some point around moving files around. And personally, I can think of a lot of better things to do with my time, and I certainly would want my team doing a lot more than just moving files around the third time. Um, it's been a sore point for communications and advertising for years in terms of managing the extremely large files that are part of these campaigns. And delivering those files, recreating assets when they can't be located easily, taking the same photo shoot in different geographies around the world within weeks of one another for a magazine, layouts um, is, is a huge cost and literally doubles the expense of those assets. And really at the end of the day they're, they're taking our time and focus away from creativity on really engaging on an emotional level with our customers. Brands are only as valuable as they're perceived to be in the customer's eyes and it's never been more critical to engage with our customers in real time where they are on their device in their language than it is today. I don't know if you can remember or not, but back in ancient times there were four channels. TV, mail, radio, phone. Does anyone remember what that telephone with the landline thing was? It's hard to remember. Today there are literally thousands of channels. Um, and, and trying to get that information out to customers. I mean, in the olden days you just had to deliver an honest product or service at a good price and your business would thrive and customers would be happy. Um, you could provide compelling information and as long as everything made sense, they would buy, they would be a repeat customer, they would refer others to you. Um, but now with most buying decisions starting on the internet, there's a lot more information and noise on the web. And our challenge is to break through the noise. And you can break through the noise by consistently delivering an emotionally engaging content or brand message to your prospects and customers, where and when they're ready to hear it in that moment. And you can still save time and money by doing it in an automated fashion. And I know that sounds cliched, but it really is that simple. Um, SendShare is one of the few products out there I've seen that can do this, so I'm excited to be talking about that today. Some other types of content that are growing. Everyone knows about video. Um, video is becoming the main way to sell products, everything from Pinterest and YouTube, Vimeo. Um, it's pretty much all about video, and if files couldn't have been larger than they were with Photoshop, now we have video. Um, I went to a conference at the end of last year and, and the one thing that everybody kept talking about uh, was that content is doubling every two years. Like literally since the beginning of time, now content is doubling every two years, which actually makes sense. If you think about everything from Aunt Sally sharing her movie about her cat on YouTube to your never-ending daily battle with your stuffed inbox, I think you can agree that information probably is doubling. Um, which brings us to digital asset management systems. Um, that's Digital asset management systems um, in the last couple of decades were something that was a, a nice to have for some companies, absolutely critical for advertising and Marcom and other communication groups. But now if you don't have a digital asset management system, I can't even imagine how you run your business. So that's at the core of any type of online channel management strategy. You've got to have a really great digital asset management at the backbone to share all that information out to the different channels. As far as where how people are looking at their different channels and where they're spending their time, the latest information I could find on it was that people are using their digital devices for um, 127 minutes on applications, 168 minutes watching TV on their computer, um, 70 minutes of web browsing, and 65 minutes on their phone. Um, personally, I think I talk more than that, so it seems a little low to me to tell you the truth. The fact that I check my phone 150 times a day, that makes sense actually. 60% um, of all goods are bought on the strength of the brand. So if you think about how important it is to deliver a consistent brand message, it's pretty amazing. I mean, what if we could publish all of our content to one place 
and then make it available everywhere across all of these channels in real time. Would that break through the noise? I'm thinking it would. So that's what really the competitive advantage of optimizing your online channel strategy is all about, that you can create content once you publish it across all the media. You have um, a two-way relationship between that media and your system so that you're also receiving information back in on which are effective and which aren't. You're constantly measuring and analyzing and rejiggering your mix, so that's where we get our mix repeat. You're building one-on-one -on -one relationships with each customer, and you're breaking through the noise. Um, it's really all about consistent brand experiences and engaging at an emotional level. It's got to speak to them or they're going to ignore it. The same way you go through your inbox each morning and you delete 20, email, 20 emails in a row because they're not from important sources, that's, you don't want to be one of those emails. You can lower costs and save time by doing it all in an automated fashion with one source. So taking a closer look at SunShare. Um, Sensure got started in 1992 in Germany and it was founded um, by the current CEO Dieter Reichert and some of his partners with the formation of Vision GmbH. That incarnation was sold to Quark, a little company I think you've all heard of back in 1998, um, you know, truly a groundbreaker in its, in its day and time. And um, their technology was actually part of the backbone of Quark. And then in 2000, Sensure was founded with Vision to create a user-centered way to organize and share information in a flexible and dynamic way um, with the idea that this was the age of information, content, and hyper-competition. And so Sensure CMS was born basically to give you that competitive advantage and to engage with customers in real time. So who's using Sensure? Um, right now it's, it's a combination. It's, it's a lot of um, the world's top publishers. You've all heard of Riva Group, um, BMW, Deutsche Bank, National Magazine Company, Condé Nast. Um, there's a few very exciting companies that are using it um, that I'm not allowed to talk about, but uh, some huge brands are, are betting it all on Sunshare, and there's no reason that you wouldn't benefit from it too. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to a, another polling question from Damien. Yeah, okay, so let's launch this poll here. So the question is, are you currently using are you using a digital asset management system, a content management system, both ERP, CRM, CMS, SAM plus more, or none, just exploring your options? So answers are still coming in. It looks like most people have some kind of DAM and CMS. And I want to be specific that you know, a web content management system, it could, you know, traditionally when you think about that, it's just, you know, your file structure and where all your assets are kept for your website. And when we're using a content management system in this context, it's really um, more your communication software that you're running your company on. Looks like everybody's uh, the, over, almost half have a digital asset management solution for the core. Excellent. You're already ahead of the curve. Um, CMS, you know, like I said, there's different incarnations. There's the smaller ones that are just for running websites. We're talking about one that you can run all of your communications on. So if you start to think about the way um, companies run their businesses today, you can kind of think about them having three different types of um, platforms to run their operations. And you can easily split them into your um, ERP, the Customer Relationship Management System, CRM, and communication software being a very large category, and that's where SendShare falls. Communication software, that segment we looked at before, covers many different functions. It covers everything from technical documentation, um, your website, PR, partner management, sales literature, um, mobile and social communications, product and marketing management. It really does it all. Now, in this space, um, there's a lot of different departments and functions um, that benefit from it. And these are the types of things that they do together. So it's everything from managing editorial, your enterprise content management, web content management, digital asset management, marketing resource management. Um, all of these areas are, 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 there's many players are in this area, and there's a lot of different types of software that aim at each one of these. Sendshare aims to cover as many of them as possible. Um, in their current version, you can see that they cover 
nearly 100% across the board with the major area that they're still working on being marketing resource management. So the focus of their next release is going to be marketing resource management as well as a refined user interface experience. So if you think about how rich media interacts with customers and across these different channels, you can see that any you know, a tweet that's written or gets somebody to think about buying your product can reach many other people. So every time any type of information is put out there on one of these channels, it enhances and helps influence people to buy your products. There's a two-way relationship between the way Accenture works with each of these different channels, and I'd like to turn it over at this point to Timmy Steele to show you how it works in action. Hey, Timmy, are you with us? Thanks, Joe. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, you're Hello. on. Yep, good, not a problem. Uh, do you want to talk to this slide, or do you want to hand over to the demo now? Let's go ahead and get live here. Okay. So Presenter. Right. Can everyone see my screen? I'm not going to hear you all because you're muted. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, hopefully, everyone can see this. Uh, I just want to briefly talk, uh, the, the, at its core, Sendshare is an asset management system and hopefully all of you have seen active asset management systems, have, you know, uh, viewing images in them, doing all the usual sorts of stuff that people do with asset management systems, tracking the metadata, looking at the information on multiple assets and assigning them to various things. Um, what is, where uh, Sendshare gets a little bit different is when we start talking about um, the structure of those assets on the asset management system. So let me just, just to show that it actually is completely dynamic how you actually see all these assets. Oops, hang on one second. I'm just gonna log in as a different user here. Uh, I don't know whether you all saw, but the interface changed completely then because um, the interface is really just a view into where those assets are. The important thing is that instead of a normal structured hierarchical um, asset library as most people are used to and the way that most uh, companies get into a little bit of trouble from having a single folder with, uh, sorry, having a series of folders with the same asset shared amongst all of them, Sendshare is built around searches. There is no hierarchical asset structure. It's a, it's a single layer of all the assets. And to make up for them, they've got a very, very powerful uh, search engine built onto each individual um, Sendshare server. So when I do do a search on anything, whatever it happens to be, it's actually doing a dynamic lookup ahead of time uh, to find out exactly how many of these assets are around. So it's very, very quick, very, very fast to find whatever you need. And this search interface can be um, as complex or as simple as you like, depending on the le level of the users using it. Or, um, just to demonstrate, there's actually a um, web front end to this interface as well. There's multiple views of it. Um, it can really just show the items in any way. But what we can do is, rather than a structure that people are used to, you can actually have a dynamic structure appearing for every single user on the system, if you like by creating new assets to uh, build that structure. So for example, I'm just creating a, um, a demo asset here and I'm just gonna assign it to myself. And that asset looks actually like a folder. So from a user's point of view, they could put stuff in there, they could uh, do, deal with it the same way they normally would a folder. So they're not worried about working in a different manner but from the system's point of view, those assets that I just put in those that folder there are still back where it all knows about it, everything is all together, and it's just created a relation between those two things. So the important thing about the relations is everything knows about each other. So these assets, these images which are here, know that they've been related to that particular folder. And that becomes more powerful when we start to look at other 
assets within the system. So you might have seen briefly when I was creating a new asset there, there are lots and lots of different types of assets within the system already and those can be built upon. You can actually have any custom assets you want and that gets really powerful with, if I go into product families, in this particular, in this particular uh, demo, uh, it's a company that makes bikes and they've actually created each one of their product families as assets. So instead of having the individual assets trying to keep up with the metadata for all of those individual assets and tracking that and maintaining the relationships between all that stuff. We have uh, the product family which inside that product family it knows the core detail about the products, all the, all the information which the product family has about it is all in here and this can be fed from uh, this can be from, fed from whatever product management system you happen to have um, or it can be manually entered in however you want to do it. But Centura is all on open XML, open XML interfaces so we can talk back and forth to whatever systems are out there. So it's got all the individual image assets associated with, with this particular product family associated to that product family in general, that product family asset. Um, and then there's the individual products in that product family also as assets within the system. So the, the important thing for delivering to multiple channels here is we have these image assets which are ready to go for print. Um, when we want to output them to a different channel, we, don't, we can dynamically create the different versions as it goes along. But we also have all of the uh, web information, video information, various other uh, information that's needing to go about the channel, they can all be in here. We don't need to individually tag each of these items with the metadata because the metadata is stored at the top level here in the product instead of as the individual assets. So in a print world, in a traditional print world, that becomes quite powerful. And I know we're talking about uh, multiple online channels here, but let me give you a quick example of where the same asset information which we've already applied to print can work with other items and uh, can work with other uh, output channels as well. So I'm going to create a quick uh, catalog here. In this particular case this is a catalog which is a fairly standard template. It has a back cover and a front cover which are all pretty standard stuff. I've now created this Oops, I also created one earlier, bear with me a second. So I've, uh, I've now created this brand new demo here and it's pre-generated the templates for, um, these two, for these two pages. So if I open that up, you can see I've got a flat plan. Again, this is a standard catalog um, that can go to print channels with no problems whatsoever. Um, the, the powerful thing about this tool is it's actually using an InDesign engine in the back, back end, but we don't even need to have uh, InDesign to be able to modify these pages. I can actually do it with a built-in editor here. So if I'm away from my desk for a period of time, I can very easily uh, just oops, grab some images here, throw them onto the cover there, quickly edit that to a better size for this page, shuffle it around. And if I send that off for a preview here, it'll actually regenerate the page with the InDesign engine in the background. It's a very, very powerful tool there. So I'm just going to save that one. And just to demonstrate uh, the power of having all those assets um, associated with the product asset type, if I do a double page product page here, so I'm creating a brand new page from a template again quickly edit this, I can grab that product family which I was showing you earlier, drag it straight onto the page and it will do a calculation, dynamically realize that it needs a little bit of slug text here, um, it's looking for all the information which is associated with the asset. If I get a preview of that, it's going to build that out from all the information which is associated with the asset there. So there's no need to manually enter this. If this is coming from a system which is tracking all that information like price information or important information that needs to be updated regularly then that can be integrated with SendShare so there is much much lower margin for error on the whole thing. 
And so we've got this as product assets here, as um, product family assets. Um, we also have technologies within the system. In this particular case, this bike has something which is called a 3D box braking system, apparently. Um, so we can drag that product in, and because we've got the two as separate, we can associate a single uh, a, a single technology with multiple uh, multiple products. So again, we're building up those relationships as we go along, and quickly forming links around these things, so that each product knows in the end exactly all about the the specifics of itself what it's related to and what other things are related to that as well. So I've just created a page in two seconds flat. Quickly save it there. Uh, save the whole flat plan there and I can show how it looks in print. So again, I've created this for print. So how does that relate to online strategies? Well, one of the most important things about the doing the online is being able to take the same information and apply it to the multiple channels. So first and foremost, we want to be able to do regional variants of things. So again with the print, and I'll come to the online in a second, I can actually duplicate the entire structure of this uh, little flyer that I've done. Sendshare is going to go off and do a calculation. This is actually all of the bits and pieces that it's looking for. It's looking for every single asset that's associated with it. And if one of those assets is marked as having a German variant, and that German variant is in the system itself, it's going to dynamically go ahead and switch those out. So this could be uh, an image swap for uh, you know different images for different regions. It could be an entire product swap. It could be uh, it could be just a um, it could be just a slug of text. It could be in any language we want to do. Um, and now we've created a completely new flat plan. But instead of the original one, where it was all in um, where it was all in English, we now have a German variant of that, with almost no operator effort there, as long as those translations are in place and associated with that product. So that's pretty powerful, and that's pretty awesome when that happens. So that's it for print. So how do we take that same technology, those same grouping of assets, uh, all of those product families, and apply it to, say, for example, the web? Well, let's start with emails, because email, uh, email send out to one of, the, one of the really obnoxious things that happens. So let's uh, just grab a template. Now, I've created a, a dynamic email template here already, and it's just using standard HTML. I could go into that in detail, but um, hopefully you all know uh, at least the basics of HTML there. So I'm just going to call this one, you know, and I'm creating this newsletter. So again, um, instead of having to manually link it to the various products, to all the bits and pieces that we need to, to the various bits of information about those products, again, I can go back to my product families here, grab six of those bikes, because I want to have six of them going in the uh, mailer, drag it over to my new template that I've created, and just create that association. So now these particular assets are associated with print pages. They're also associated with this mailer that I've just created. Uh, I can quickly edit this text. Um, Sentia has a built-in XML editor. Now, if this was something which was a regular templated uh, mail out, which is going all the time, this could be redone as a form instead of an actual full editor here. Um, it can be as simple or as complex as you like. It can import in word text if that's where the copy comes from. I've just got it as a simple XML editor here so that I can quickly uh, I can quickly update. Just save and close that. So this now has all the information that it needs, uh, along with the template which I'd applied earlier to be able to mail this out. So I have a little server action in here called Create Newsletter. Now, for this particular demo, there's only one recipient in my list. Now, this could be packaged up and delivered out to whatever company you use to remail out. Uh, this could be, uh, you could have all of the users, uh, sorry, all of your mailing list as assets within your system. And that's a really powerful tool as well, because if they then click through on any of these, it creates a relation with that user and these particular assets. And so it will know what, what that user liked. So next time you're creating a, uh, next time you're creating a mail out, you can uh, customize the base on popularity. So I'll just give this July working offer. 
Okay, so it's found my massive little mailing list of one recipient here. I'm going to send that out. I'll fire up my email client here. Did it finish over there? Yep, there we go. And this is where something goes wrong with a demo because it absolutely has to. Um, you can never have a perfect demo here. So I'm just going to pull up one of the ones I've got in the trash here. So this is actually one which I've created earlier. Uh, various different uh, various different bits and pieces. I've got that same bike on there. So this is all related to the same assets. I don't need to recreate the new mailer. But this would send out this based on the template that I've created earlier. But to make it even easier for sending this out to multiple channels in one fell swoop, we actually have the template dynamically create a microsite to match this. So this will link to a microsite. Man, this is going well so far. Um, <laughs> this will link to a microsite which actually has all of those products on there. Bear with me a second. Okay, so it didn't actually create the template properly. Bear with me one second while I just rerun that action. I should mention at this point that I'm running this entire demo from a uh, laptop with not a huge amount of memory and virtual machines running to do everything. So of course something has to go wrong with here. And bear with me. Yes. So what's happened there is that it actually didn't end up creating my uh, didn't end up creating my microsite, which is a little bit unfortunate there. So I can't show you it on here, but I've created some earlier anyway. So Here's what it would look like if I click through to that link. And again, this could pass through to um, this could pass through to your own uh, online store if you like. Um, this could be framed within it, or it can pass the asset information directly. You can have a shopping basket online with this. And because this is dynamically linked, if any product information actually changes, say for example, sales notice that this was at 75% discount and it should be at 10% discount, they can quickly go back into SendShare go to that product and change that down to 10% instead. So when I refresh that page, or if I went to it a little later after that's changed, it's now changed this to 10%. Um, and again, this could be fed from a dynamic system, a pricing system you've got internally. It could be a two-way link as well, so if information changes in Sensure, it could feed back to that system. Um, and you're just creating a series of dynamic relationships with all these things. So that's sending things out to the web. This actually works just as well for sending it out to um, sending it out to, say, for example, an iPad. There we go. So I've got an iPad simulator here, again running on the same machine. So sorry if things are running a little bit slow here. Um, we've used that same information, that same asset information. To create a little mini iPad, um, uh, little iPad uh, app. So again, all of those same product families. Um, you know, we can quickly sort and do whatever we need to to um, to have a look at that information. But because these are using the same series of assets that are related to that product family, it's got all of the information there. Um, it's got um, all of those same images, but repurposed them for an iPad. But it's also got the web content, which we need. So for example, nice 360 degree view there. Um, we, can, we can look at the video, which is behind here. Um, I won't do that just now. Uh, you know, uh, colorizing options, things like that. You can have all that dynamic information, and it's still related back to that one core asset. So. Sensure also have been recently um, writing interfaces to communicate with the various uh, major players in the social media market. So right at this moment, there is also a, um, if you are in the system as a user, there is options to um, publish to Facebook, there's options to, uh, to post something to YouTube, there's options to uh, read and write from Twitter. And the, the real power in that is if you post a product to a product page on Facebook and a user who is registered in your system likes that product, then that becomes a relationship between that user and that product. 
And so again, when you're going to create your mail out or create your dynamic um, uh, publication later on in the field, the system already knows that that particular user likes that particular product. So if there's a sale on that product or if those products are, um, or, or if something similar comes out or a new release of that product comes out, you can target based on the relationships which are built into the system there. So that's pretty much where I got to with the uh, nice canned demo that we have here. Um, I apologize for that little mistake earlier. I'll find out what was going on with that. But uh, I'd like to uh, open it up for questions, if that's all right. Um, I don't know how to drive this, uh, Jill. I'll leave it to you and Damien to open that up. Yeah, so thanks, everybody. Um, we can put questions right in the question panel, uh, or we can actually unmute everybody, but that might be uh, everyone's all at once. So why don't we just do um, put the question panel here? And uh, we have a question. Uh, is there a send share module for mailing slash shipping? You mean actual for physical delivery? Um, I think that's where the question was. Um, the, basically, the, it's not what send share is uh, built around, but it can certainly communicate with um, any other systems. So if you already have a, a shipping and delivery system in place, then um, send share can pass whatever information is needed to that system. And if that system can communicate back, then it can pass on the information that those products have actually been shipped back into SendShare, so creating those relationships. Great. All right, do we have uh, any other questions from anybody? Here's one. Um, how does SendShare work with my existing digital asset management system? Right. Well, it depends on what that system is, obviously. Uh, Sensure can use other systems in the back end of it, if you like. Um, it can read and write from it. And certainly, there's some systems out there which are particularly powerful in certain ways. Um, in, with some of those systems, it will, it will certainly take the place of them and replace the functionality which is there. Um, it really depends on the system, and it's a bit of a loaded question there. I am uh, certainly Sensure can pull in the information which is already in an existing system. Uh, it can talk back and forth to an existing system, but if it's just a um, if it's just a simple um, asset storage system with metadata on it, it's probably better to actually you know reutilize the hardware for Sensure and actually replace um, actually replace the system with Sensure. Can you tell us a little bit more about how SendShare works with social media, um, blogs, and other languages? Uh, I can certainly show you a little. Uh, oh, actually, I don't actually have that demo here. Um, I can talk to it a little bit. Um, basically, it just does a. It's a. Um, it's a two two way interface for it. As far as blogging is concerned, um, the blogging is uh, SendShare can be used to. to Host a blogging site, and in fact, um, one of our one of the clients that we have is um, uh, News AT, which is in Germany, and uh, they have they have all of this content in multiple languages. It's linked up to various social media, so if you like an article on here, it creates a re relationship back. Um, you know, so it can be used as both a blogging platform. Let me see if I've got the blogging platform here as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. Um, it can actually be used as its own blogging platform. And again, you know, if you've if you've created this as a blogging platform, then the users which are within the system become assets within SendShare. The articles that they write become assets within SendShare. And if another user likes that other user, it becomes a relationship between the two as well. So you're just building up a vast amount of information about each user who's on the system, what they like, what they don't like, um, and you know you can you can, that can be a really powerful marketing tool and a really powerful sales tool as it goes along. Uh, so that hopefully answers a little bit. Uh, feel free to follow up on that question if I've missed something on it. No, that's good. And then languages. How many languages are covered? Uh, as many as you like. Uh, I mean, built into the system right now, there's uh, it comes out of the box with four languages just because that was 
the most common market, which is English, German, French, and I can't even remember what the third one, fourth one is. Um, they've done a uh, they've done a Portuguese version for uh, Editorial Abril in Brazil, which are uh, you know the largest publisher in Brazil. They produce all of their magazines on Sendshare, um, and the com it's completely in Portuguese. Uh, that wasn't in the original release of the of Sendshare. They can put in any languages very easily. Um, it'll generally use the system language for the client, um, but yeah, you could have you could have as many languages as you like. You can even publish things in Klingon if you really want to, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> that's about it, really. I mean, whatever languages you want. And then for video, how does it handle video? Um, it it stores video as an asset. Um, I, I mean, it's it's not a it's not a video editing tool. It's not designed for that. But certainly, the video. If I go into that bike video, it's got a video in there. It stores it as an asset. It creates the relationships. We can uh, we can preview the video. I don't actually have the video module loaded on here because it's a little bit intensive on my tiny lap. Job, um, but you know, you could uh, watch that video. You could um, assign it to. Uh, a web interface to an iPad interface, whatever it is you want to assign it. So, handles video just fine. It doesn't do video editing. That's not what Sensure is built around, but certainly it can handle any of the video that's coming into it. Cool. Do you guys want to unmute? I mean, I, I, I don't think everyone's going to leap out at once. It's probably just as quick to do it that way, and then we can do questions two way. There was another question from. Um... Henning, that was, do you have an API available to pass information along to Sensure, such as product models or to populate the metadata or catalogs, um, etc.? Sensure is almost entirely built on XML, and it, it's not so much of an as an API. It's if you can write, if if you can import or export to um, an XML file or a CSV or something of that nature, then Sendshare can read or write into it. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredibly open system. So for that reason, they don't actually have a custom API. They've just got a series of metadata fields, and it's just knowing what those tags are to pass them back and forth. So it's actually very simple to integrate systems. And I've, I've actually, one of the companies I used to work for had a very, very ancient AS400 for its ad booking system, and Sendshare very happily took the information coming out of that and passed information straight back to it with no problems whatsoever. So it, it'll talk to anything. Anything else? Any other questions? other questions? I guess the only final one would be in terms of optimizing an online channel strategy, are there ways to measure the effectiveness of the different you know whether I'm doing a, a, a mobile application. If I say, if I take the same um, asset and I publish it out to different channels, can I measure how effective that is, or would it interface with a different kind of reporting system? It, it'll interface with a different kind of reporting system. I mean, that's actually coming in the the newer version. A little bit more of the reporting on there, um, but certainly, you know, it, if if you are pushing this to multiple channels, if someone clicks on a link within one of those channels. Then Sensure will know about that, so it'll, it's it's gathering the data, but um, the information is probably best pushed to a, a different reporting tool at the end of it, um, for for um, for massaging that data at the end of it, basically to find out what's going on. Okay, so all the data resides in the system; it's just a matter of extracting it and, and acting exactly. on it. Exactly. Exactly, and reports. There, there are many, many reports that have been generated from Sensure. It's a custom, it's a custom function because everyone needs different information out of reports. So, anytime a report, uh, anytime a a template for a report needs to be done, that's custom work to to prepare that the first time, and then after that, it's a template that can be used to generate that report anytime. Great. Um, I, I should actually just mention one thing I forgot in my demo. Um, you know, we're looking at fairly bog standard sites. You know, nothing that exciting as part of this. Um, I'll just actually quickly show um, Vitra, which is uh, one of the big um, one of the big German uh, furniture companies. And just to show, this is this site is entirely built 
from within SendShare. So you can actually register it as a user, and if you um, like a product or put in your basket or something, it's creating those relationships again. But uh, just to show it's not formulaic, and you know the 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 sites it generates don't have to be you know ugly utilitarian things. They can be beautiful dynamic sites as they're going along. So each one of these links is just linking back to those product family informations back in, in SendShare itself. That's a beautiful Any site. What's your other favorite, what are some of your favorite examples of how some of the current customers are using SendShare? Um, well I come from an old publishing background so I mean my my favorite example was uh, was um, when the the company I used to work for, the National Magazine Company, when they wanted to switch over to um, uh, when the iPad was released and they wanted to be able to produce digital digital publications instead of just print, because all of the assets for each and every magazine and each and every page were already within SendShare, they could produce a digital version as an output channel of their print version with almost no effort and they are still the only publisher in the UK to produce all of their magazines um, on the iPad uh, with an iPad version on the day of release. No one else has quite matched it yet. Um, they've, in the initial stages it was all just the print assets repurposed but now they've started adding in the you know web, web unique assets and you know video and various flash things and things like that through it. So yeah, that, I mean that was that was just amazing when they switched over, and the fact that they still have no competitors doing the same thing, um, and they could only do that because everything was maintained within Censure. That's amazing that they're able to do it on the same day. Yeah, absolutely. And considering their deadlines run white to the wire, especially on their weekly magazines, you know they they are delivering the package to the printers to run it through the press and outputting a um, iPad version at the same time with no no major extra effort on content creation or anything like that because all the content's already there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for a great demo.